Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Can you believe that this is a top 10 matchup? Can you believe that this Saturday we are going to be watching number 8 Arkansas and number 2 Georgia in Athens with college game day in town with surprising college football playoff implications? If you had told me that or anybody else that about a month ago, we all would have laughed at you and said you were joking, said you didn't know what you were talking about. But here we are, the Hogs, the Dogs, Saturday morning, top 10 matchup, but will it live up to one? So guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, ready to break down everything you need to know as Arkansas travels to Athens on Saturday morning. And of course, we're going to share our prediction for this game as well. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. The major thing there, guys, is of course our expert picks. Our expert picks for week five just came out today. They are some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. We've beat out over 80% of the national analysts each of the last three years. If you haven't signed up for them today, you need to. You need to so you don't miss out on the analysis for this week and you don't miss out on the analysis for the rest of the year. I can promise you it will be one of the best decisions you make all season long. Again, the gridironexpert.com, the expert picks down in the description below. So let's take a look at this game, guys. Again, a very, very fun one and intriguing one between Arkansas and Georgia. The Razorbacks, surprisingly, might be Georgia's toughest test so far this year. Uh, everybody would have said that was Clemson, but after the downfall of Clemson, you can make the case that Arkansas, both offensively and defensively, will be the toughest test that Georgia has faced all season long. And you look at a little bit of the history. These two teams actually met last year uh, in the season opener late in September due to covid Georgia went to Fayetteville, where the Hogs actually led by five midway through the third quarter. The Razorbacks were beating Georgia 10-5 to midway through the third quarter before imploding, committing a couple costly turnovers, Georgia pulling away to win 37-10. to Obviously, a lot has changed there. A lot has changed for Arkansas. Certainly, a lot has changed for Georgia, as the Bulldogs were starting Dewan Mathis and then switched him to Stetson Bennett in that game. Now, they have a guy named JT Daniels, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Let's go ahead and break down the offense first, and we'll start with Arkansas. We'll start with the road team. And when you look at the Razorbacks, guys, this is a very, very balanced offense, taking major steps forward from what we saw last year. They're averaging 35.8 points per game. They're averaging 219 passing yards per game, and the big number here, 261 rushing yards per game. The Razorbacks know how to run the football. They have the offensive line to do it, and they have all the talent in the backfield to do it. Five players with at least 100 rushing yards, and one of them is their quarterback in K.J. Jefferson, a guy who's rushed for 230 yards and two touchdowns, but has also thrown for 844 yards and six touchdowns. And guys, really, K.J. Jefferson is the X factor for Arkansas in this game. Because here's the thing. If you know Georgia and you know what they're about, you know you're not going to run on them. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about the defense. But Georgia is giving up just 66 rushing yards per game. That's it. Arkansas and Kendall Bryles, their offensive coordinator, have to recognize that you're probably not going to get much success on the ground. You're not going to break out you know, a 10, 12-yard run. You might be lucky if you do that once in the game. It's not going to happen. So K.J. Jefferson is the X factor because, first off, he's got to be able to win the game through the air. Arkansas has to be able to find a passing attack and not a little screen pass, not a play that goes a yard or two past the line of scrimmage. They have to take, and I'm not saying deep shots, but you have to throw the ball downfield. You have to get vertical. If you go horizontal along the line of scrimmage or barely past it, you're not going to beat Georgia. It's not going to happen. So the Razorbacks have to be able to throw the ball, and K.J. Jefferson, with his legs, is going to have to pick up some crucial third down conversions. He's going to have to be able to extend the plays and make good decisions because Georgia's defensive line is going to be wreaking havoc and be pressuring Jefferson all day long. He has the talent to do it. The Razorbacks have the talent to do it. Traylon Burks, remember last year, or last week, everybody said the Hogs couldn't beat A&M because A&M had one of the best passing defenses in the country. Well, K.J. Jefferson torched them for 212 yards, two touchdowns, one going for 85 yards to Traylon Burks. The Hogs' offense can't exploit Georgia's defense. It's going to be very, very tough, and if they want to do it, they've got to do it through the air. When you look at Georgia and their offense, obviously it's ridiculous. It's, they're loaded with talent. And we've been saying it for weeks now, really over a year now, that JT Daniels was that missing piece for Georgia. JT Daniels was what Georgia needed to finally stretch the field, to get those home run plays. He's the quarterback and the piece they've been looking for to maybe capture their first national title since 1980. 
Daniel so far this year has thrown for 567 yards, five touchdowns, just two interceptions. The team is averaging 277.3 passing yards per game. They're averaging 177.3 rushing yards per game. So, like Arkansas, very, very balanced. Uh, like Arkansas, Georgia has enough people on their backfield to pick up the slack. Georgia has three players that have rushed for at least 100 rushing yards, led by Zamir White, but they also have James Cook and Kendall Milton. So they're loaded. Great quarterback, one of the best in the SEC, maybe one of the best in the country. Three capable running backs to pick up the slack and to hit Arkansas in all areas. And then, of course, they have a very talented wide receiver core as well. This is a team that can stretch the field and a team that has the ability to hit those big home run plays that Arkansas was hitting last year, uh, last week against A&M. And then we start to see Georgia hit a little bit more as the Bulldogs are averaging 42 points per game. So again, these are two very balanced offenses. Each are going to have a different key to the game in terms of exploit the other. And I will say that Georgia so far, like I said, they dominated every game they've played. I mean, they beat Vanderbilt, obviously. They beat uh, South Carolina. They beat UAB. And they beat Clemson, who, again, that win not looking as impressive now, but still an impressive neutral site victory over a good Clemson defense, at least. When you look at Arkansas defensively, uh, you could, again, make the case that Arkansas's defense, led by Barry Odom, will be the toughest defense that this Georgia offense has faced. You really could make that case. Because when you look at the Hogs' numbers and what they've been doing, not just against Texas A&M last week, but against Texas, uh, and then throw in Rice and Georgia Southern if you want, but Texas and, a and Texas A&M, those two victories, both by double digits, are the reason that Arkansas is ranked number eight, the reason where they are right now. And the reason for that is, again, their defense. They have not allowed more than 21 points this year. Those 21 points came against Texas while the Hogs scored 40 on them, beat them 40 to 21. So they have not allowed more than 21 points. They're allowing just 268.3 total yards per game and just an average of 124 rushing yards per game. That's it, just 124. So if you're Georgia, this could be like Arkansas. We say, hey, Arkansas, if you want to win, you got to do it through the air. Georgia might too. Georgia might have to rely more on the arm of JT Daniels in the ground game because Arkansas is not letting anybody budge. They shut down a triple option team in Georgia Southern. They shut down Bajon Robinson at Texas. And last week against Texas A&M, they only allowed 121 rushing yards. And it should be noted that 67 of those came on one rushing touchdown. If you subtract that, Arkansas held A&M to 54 rushing yards on 22 carries for an average of 2.4 yards per carry. And that simply won't cut it if you're trying to win a game. So Arkansas's front seven, their defensive line, has been stout. Their linebacking core is one of the best in the country with Bumper Poole and Grant Morgan uh, and Hayden Henry. Now, this is a defense for Arkansas that, again, is going to have to try to make Georgia one-dimensional. If they can make them one-dimensional, force JT Daniels to have to win the game through the air, and in turn create a little bit of pressure on JT Daniels like they did last week with Zach Calzada, three sacks, nine tackles for a loss, eight QB hurries, if Arkansas can do that, they have a chance in this game. Because Georgia, you have to take away one aspect of their offense. If they take away the run game, force Daniels to win through the air, Arkansas can rely a little bit more on their secondary, which isn't too bad their, themselves, and maybe have a chance to pull off this upset. But that's how they have to do it. They have to force them to be one-dimensional, and then they got to create pressure, which is a very difficult thing to do against this Georgia offensive line. When you look at Georgia's defense, we know the Bulldogs have one of the best defenses in the country. They usually do under Kirby Smart, right? Uh, and again, this has been no exception. This year, the most points they've allowed in a single game was 13 against South Carolina, a game that was well out of reach, and South Carolina getting a late touchdown there to get to 13. Otherwise, it would have obviously been in the single digits. Georgia's allowing just 115.8 passing yards per game, and like we mentioned earlier, they're allowing just 66 rushing yards per game. That number is the big one here because Arkansas, again, is a team that relies on the run. Again, Jefferson is capable of winning through the air, but... They want to run the football. They have the talent to run the football. And if they can't, and if Kendall Bryles gets too stuck in his ways and runs it on first down, runs it on second down, Georgia's line is going to stuff that every time. And if Arkansas forces themselves into third and seven, third and eight, third and long situations, the Hogs don't stand a chance because Georgia's going to know they're going to pass on those downs. Arkansas play calling wise has to be creative. They have to be a little unpredictable. They can't be monotonous. And they have to be you know, bold enough and wise enough to say, hey, we know we can't run. Why are we going to waste a down trying to run the ball where we might have a better chance just to throw it? So if K.J. Jefferson throws for 50, uh, 50 attempts in this game, so be it, we're not going to be able to run the ball. And we know that with Georgia's defense. Again, 66 rushing yards per game. The key for Georgia defensively for me is to keep K.J. Jefferson in the pocket and, and force him to throw. Force, and more specifically, I would say force him to throw short. Uh, because again, 
Arkansas simply can't win that way. These little, if you've watched Arkansas, the screen passes to the left or the right, two or three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, these little dump passes over the middle that go maybe two yards past the line of scrimmage. You're not going to beat Georgia with that. Arkansas has to be throwing at the markers. They've got to be going to the sideline. They've got to be able to get these first downs. And again, I'm not saying chunk it deep every time, but they've got to find a way to incorporate their running backs in their passing game. Uh, might as well use them if they're there, but you're not going to be able to get them on the ground. Incorporate the running backs and find a way to take more shots deep, a little further downfield than right around the line of scrimmage. But if you're Georgia, that's what you want Arkansas to do. If I'm Georgia, if I'm a Georgia fan, I am not worried in the slightest about the Hogs running on me. I'm worried about KJ Jefferson's arm, if anything. If you force him to stay short, keep the ball in front of you, pressure him, keep him in the pocket, don't let him extend plays with his legs because he's a dangerous dual threat quarterback, Georgia will be just fine. They really will. And the last thing I want to say on Georgia here, the last thing I want to say on Georgia here is with their rushing defense, which I can't stress enough about how good it is. The most rushing yards that Georgia has allowed in a single game this year was 127 rushing yards to UAB, of all people. On the year, through four games, Four games, Georgia has allowed 264 total rushing yards. Four games, they've allowed a total of 264 rushing yards. Arkansas, again, is averaging 261 per game. 264 in the entire year for Georgia. Arkansas is averaging about that per game. That shows you how good this Georgia rushing defense is. And that shows you the test that Arkansas is up against and what they're going to have to do if they want to try to win this game. And it's not going to be running the ball. So let's take a look at our final analysis here with our final pick for the Hogs and the Dogs in Athens. Again, college game day. You hate to see this game for me at 11 a.m. Obviously a top 10 matchup like this. It feels like it should be the SEC 230 game or maybe even the primetime night game, 6 or 7 o'clock on ESPN. Uh, but here we go. Game days in towns, 11 a.m. in Athens, and some say that could actually benefit the Hogs. We'll see. Everybody is picking Georgia in this game. Everybody is picking Georgia in a blowout. Spread a little bit disrespectful, I think. 18 and a half points in favor of the Bulldogs. Uh, I don't think that happens, guys. I don't think that Georgia wins in a blowout. But Georgia is going to win this game. Uh, this is a game, guys, I do see possibly being a low-scoring, uh, relatively low-scoring defensive slugfest because Arkansas's defense is legit. Georgia's defense is legit. And if both teams are able to shut down the other's run, it's just going to be a stalemate of who can outplay the other, KJ Jefferson or JT Daniels. And it very well could be a game of who commits the most turnovers, who makes the most mistakes, who really beats themselves and sets the other up with decent field position. And that could be the thing here. I don't think it's a one-possession game. I don't think it's a game that comes down to the wire. But I think Arkansas plays Georgia a lot closer than people think. I think the Hogs put up one heck of a fight in Athens on Saturday morning, but ultimately they're going to fall short. Georgia wins this game and proves to 5-0. and They're the number two team in the, in the country for a reason. They will remain that with this win over Arkansas, but the Hogs will barely drop out the top ten. Season's far from over. They've been one of the biggest prizes in the country. If they go out and look respectable against Georgia, they compete, and we think they will. That's enough to hang your hat on, something to be proud about. And the Hogs still have a long ways to go. The season can still end up being very special for them, despite being handed their first loss in Athens on Saturday. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. We've got the Georgia Bulldogs taking down Arkansas on Saturday. Should be a fun one, though. Don't miss it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out everything down in the description below. Go sign up for those expert picks on our website, thegridironexpert.com. One of the best decisions you will make all year long because it's some of the best picks in the country you will get all year long. So sign up for those today, again, in the description, thegridironexpert.com. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.